Hello YouTube, D. Baudry here. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff to cover uh, and this video is a little bit different than most of them I do. I do do a lot of teardown videos but uh, you know I tend to focus on things that are actually my projects or things that I'm interested in uh, versus just random other things. Uh, however, uh, I knew about this being a problem and happened to have a Dualtron Storm limited edition controller that had freshly burned out come my way. So anyway, here it is and I'm going to talk about why I think they blow up. Because uh, this is apparently a pretty common problem. Alright, so as you can see, Dualtron Storm limited edition. Uh, this is the controller shell. It's also the footrest on the back. Um, so it's a pretty beefy hunk of aluminum and it is. It's literally solid cast aluminum throughout every part of it. Uh, it it's a good solid um, mass of aluminum. In, in my opinion, uh, this should be able to handle twice the wattage of what the controller actually has. Uh, you know, I, I have 24 FET controllers that are 22 kilowatts that have less aluminum mass around them than this and they don't go into thermal runaway and blow up. So this is gracious plenty. It's a big hunk of cast aluminum. It should do the trick. My understanding is is that initially they did not have this machine surface on it. Instead that these little fins went all the way through here. Um, which again in my opinion should have been gracious plenty. Uh, I, I honestly can't say that you needed more here. But hey controllers were blown up and so Dualtron said oh well let's slap a heat sink on there so they machined that flat uh, came up with this thing which isn't aluminum it's like zinc or something I don't know what this is uh, it's not aluminum it doesn't feel like aluminum there's this machine spot on it that's the wrong color for aluminum you know aluminum shiny like this and that's gray I don't know what this is it's not aluminum it feels wrong it it rings wrong everything about this says not aluminum um, you know pop metal or something zinc anyway that did have thermal paste underneath it and I screwed down right there and then screwed into the heat spreader um, so seemed like a good idea but it's not <laughs> uh, right here sitting on top of that thing and literally I mean right there snug up against it that's the plastic wheel well so literally no airflow happens here at all because it's completely covered up by a plastic wheel well so Dualtron what the hell were you thinking stupid idea dudes what you should have done is if you're going to do this is you take the plastic wheel well off <laughs> make one out of aluminum uh, not cast pot metal or whatever this is and that way tire spinning air blowy stuff happens rather than just you know oh let's just hide another hunk of aluminum that's not going to be able to do squat behind what's already there which should have been more than enough anyway <clears throat> anyway uh, expensive implementation uh, lots of mass just doesn't work and 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 I don't think it's this that's the problem and I'll talk about that here too so put this stuff on the floor get out of my way uh, here's the heat spreader I have a bunch of stuff to go over so this is the top of the heat spreader and that's what mounts to that the inside of that machined area on the uh, controller shell so lots of surface area no no squawks about that no problems about that and it's a T style heat spreader uh, and it's got sufficient mass here. I don't really have a problem with this either. Um, uh, you know, I, I've seen lots of 24 FET controllers that do the same thing. I've seen dual 12 FETs that do the same thing. And this generally works okay. It's not a problem. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I don't have a problem with T-style heat spreaders. I don't have a problem with the fact that, you know, there's one controller on one side and another controller on the other side. That's all fine. Um, but I do have problems with this heat spreader. <laughs> okay, so look at this thickness. Uh, it's about six millimeters thick. Look at that end, and that's about two and a half, maybe three millimeters thick. And look at it edge on, and you can see it's a nice big wedge. Okay, uh, why do I care? Well, because you want all your MOSFETs basically doing the exact same thing when it comes to heat and cooling and all kind of stuff. And so, more aluminum mass, less aluminum mass, more heat, less heat. And I don't know if this means anything or it was purely arbitrary what blew up, but hey, down there where there was less aluminum mass, that's where the MOSFETs blew up. Um, is that characteristic of what happens all the time in these controllers? I can't speak to that because I've only ever looked at one of these. So maybe, um, but that does make me suspicious that it's down here where there's the less aluminum mass. So those MOSFETs could have very easily have been ready to go thermal overload nuclear war and then they did. 
And it was because, you know, there was just a little bit less cooling there. And also, the controllers have no temperature sensors in them. So they wouldn't know if they had hot MOSFETs or not. And they certainly wouldn't know to be able to shut the power down to something less than, you know, 11 and a half uh, kilowatts. Uh, because the MOSFETs were too hot. They, you know, they would have known to do that because there's no temp sensors. So, a uh, bad design. You know, heat differential differences, that's never good in a motor controller design. Uh, no temp sensors, again, bad idea. So, toss it on the floor. Let's talk about this thingy. Okay, first thing I want to show you is this. Um, and that's about 12 inches long. And this is the rear motor face cable. Th this connector is stupid as hell. Um, so the three and a half millimeter bullets inside there, and supposedly this is about six kilowatts going to the motor. Well, three and a half millimeter bullets don't cut it for that. This was stupid. They should have done five and a half millimeter bullets, which would have cost a hell of a lot less than this nonsense would have. And also the back motor has a haul cable. And you can see that right here. There's where it plugs in. Okay, so I'm going to wind up the front controller cable because it's about 11,000 miles long. Um, it's really five and a half feet, but you get the idea. So there it is. Uh, and same connector, but no haul pigtail at all. And if you look down here, same thing, no haul pigtail. But right there on the board <laughs> is the through holes for soldering in a connector. So dual trying to save them what themselves, what, a dollar <laughs> by using a uh, cable that doesn't have the hall wires in it and not putting in a JST 2.0 connector versus adding it. They saved themselves a dollar at most. <clears throat> All I can say is, you morons, the halls are in the damn motor. Add the damn hall cable. What the hell were you thinking? You know, all the electronics are here. You just didn't bother. That's it. You decided to save yourself a buck. So, good job, Dualtron. You really pretty much failed on that one. Um, so uh, there are battery plus and battery minus here, battery plus, battery minus there. And they come out the other side of here into a couple of six millimeter bullets. That part's good. I definitely like six millimeter bullets. And again, you can see two wires coming out there. So uh, from here and from here, you basically have two mirror images of the exact same thing. There's almost no differences other than like a hall connector. And the fact that, you know, like all the input signals come over here and then split to both. Otherwise, they're electrically identical. Um, in my opinion, this is a Dualtron Storm controller with a couple of current handling upgrades to it. And that's it. Otherwise, it is the exact same thing as what's in the Dualtron Storm. Um, it's just, you know, getting pushed harder. Uh, in fact, right here on this one, this is a one-year-old controller, by the way that just died. I mean, this was sold new a year ago. It says right here, Storm version 3.2. So it doesn't say Storm LTD or anything like that. It just says Storm version 3.2. So uh, this is one of the first things I saw and made me think, hmm, I betcha this is a Storm controller just getting pushed harder. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is there are solder pads right here and here, here for surface mount shunts. So those would be for the Storm but on here, they went for higher amperage Nicotel shunts. I think that's the right name for that. Nicotel, I think that's it. Anyway, for higher amperage uh, shunts on this side instead, because this is, you know, out of a Storm Limited, and, you know, they're 11 and a half kilowatts rather than, you know, it's basically 6 kilowatts or 6 and a half kilowatts. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I bet you the wires are all the same. The phase wires are probably all the same. Battery wires are all the same. Just, you know, basically shunts and um, some reinforcing for more current. Uh, probably the Storm doesn't have like all the copper reinforcing that's on the buses. Uh, you, know, you know, it's not needed because it's much lower amperage, you know, everywhere. Uh, whereas with the Storm Limited, it does need it because, well, those paths kind of get a little warm if you don't. Uh, one, of the one of the noticeable things I saw, and I will show you that right now, is this. So if you look right there where my pinky is, yeah, call on camera. You can see that, I think. Well, yeah, there we go. Now you can kind of see it. So there's two little jumper wires right there. And you can see them over there, too. If I turn the light down. Oh, that's worse. Okay, that was better. Uh, yeah, you can see them there. And there's another set over there, and over here, and here, and here as well. So there's one per face. Anyway, they're jumper wires. And they go 
from right here, there's the two nubbins of the wire. They go from the battery minus bus, which is this and this, over to that MOSFET. Uh, whereas the other MOSFET in the same phase has, here's bat minus, and it's got solder across to reinforce it, but it's got a direct path. So uh, this is bad for two reasons. So first of all, this MOSFET here has got a more direct path for current flow than this one has. So resistance and current flow is not going to be the same from here to here or here to here. Uh, and also, this one passes right underneath the, uh, the phase bus. So there's going to be a lot of ringing and noise that happens here that's induced. Uh, and it may be that from here to here, it's inducing it onto the phase bus, or the phase bus is inducing it onto here, but I guarantee it's happening. And also, there's no ground plane in the board. Um, so there's only two millimeters worth of thickness from whoops, here to here. Uh, so I can guarantee you that that's creating interference, for sure it is. Uh, and, and this could be easily detected with an oscilloscope, most likely. <clears throat> Whereas this one here, that's not the case. You've got a direct path straight to the MOSFET leg. That's not a problem. This is used every day. Great design. Do that, please, always. Do this never. This is a bad design. <laughs> Using a jumper, really? Most likely, and this is another one of those reasons why I think that this is a storm controller that's been beefed up and pushed harder. Um, because uh, there is a rather thin uh, copper trace right through here, and probably for a storm, that's enough. Because it's only, you know, 6,000 watts, right? Across both controllers. So it really means like 3,000 watts here. Um, whereas with this thing, you know, it's literally seeing 6,000 watts right there, and probably that little dinky trace burned out all the time, so they had to reinforce it with some jumpers. Uh, so, yeah, one of the reasons why I think that this is a storm controller just pushed harder. <clears throat> Uh, and of course, I'll bet you anything, the Storm didn't have the copper reinforcing, whereas for the Storm Limited uh, edition, it has to have them, because otherwise, again, all those traces wouldn't be able to handle the current load. Uh, anyway, I think this is a Storm controller, just pushed too hard. Uh, a couple good things about them. So, the MOSFETs, so, you know, again, this is one side, that's the other side. These are all MDP, uh, what are NO27s? I think that's right. Oop. Come on, light. Do the right thing. There we go. MDP NO27. That's a magnet chips part. And those are lovely MOSFETs. I use them all the time. Uh, very good component choice. Don't have an issue with them at all. Uh, so that's probably the biggest thumbs up I can say about this controller. The rest of it is eh, some bad choices, some slightly less bad choices, and some worser choices. And I'm going to talk to you about another one of those. So these are your filter caps. And you have one per phase, and this is pretty standard design for controllers. Uh, the problem is, is these ones are 470s, and these two are 330s. Which means that filtering here versus here and here isn't all the same, and that's generally bad. Um, and those filter caps, they are literally, uh, you can see the traces, right here's bat minus, and here's bat plus, and those caps are right there right at the MOSFETs, right where they should be, where they're going to do the absolute best case scenario of filtering out ripple and stuff like that. So good placement um, for both those two and also for that one too. It's just that they went for 330 microfarads for, rather than 470. So you're going to get better ripple filtering there than you will here. What, what did they do that for? The cost difference between a 330 and a 470 is negligible. That was just stupid. <laughs> no idea why they did that one. I'm just going to say, that's just, that's just a, you know, another chintzy decision that uh, makes the controllers less reliable. That, that was not a good choice. So, you know, jumpers, little odd things like that, you know, the way things are reinforced, stuff like that, makes me say that this is the Storm controller, a.k.a., you know, 6,000 watts-ish, um, you know, just pushed way too hard, and that's why they blow up on the Storm Limited, and probably why they will keep blowing up on the Storm Limited. Anyway... Hope that helps somebody out. If not, at least it was a nice teardown video of, well, what a Storm Limited, a.k.a. Storm Controller looks like. Hope that helps somebody out and answers a few questions for you. Take care, folks.